Hey, this is Aaron Hobson with Red Hook Guitar. Uh, I'm going to talk today about the relative minor. Maybe you've heard of it, maybe you haven't. Um, in, in a simplistic description or definition, you know, always going back to the key of C because it's very easy. Uh, the relative minor is always the sixth degree, it's very hard for me to say, sixth degree of the major scale. So we have C major here, we know this is our one, our two, our three, our four, our five. The sixth note here is A, so that is our relative minor. So you can figure that out if you've been playing your major scales and practicing your major scales, which we talked about in one of the first five lessons. Um, you know, you can take any of them. So see, I have F major here, F, G, A, B flat, C, D. So one, two, three, four, five, six, D is the relative minor of F major. Uh, here's G major, right? G, A, B, C, D, E. So one, two, three, four, five, six, E is my relative minor of G major. Here's D major, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B is my relative minor of D major. So um, it's an easy enough thing to figure out if you've already been practicing your major scales and you've already been, you know, thinking about your intervals and what your intervals mean. Um, so here's where it gets a little tricky for some of my students. So if I have this C major scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, right? Those are the same notes as an A minor scale. The relative minor of C is A. So here's my A minor scale, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. So it's the same exact notes, but you're starting on A and ending on A. Now we talked about the natural minor scale a couple lessons ago. Um, maybe even it was the last lesson I did. <laughs> they kind of all run together. So you, hear, you have your C major scale within there, right? C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. But in A minor, you're starting on the A and ending on the A. So a typical question my students ask me is, well, why do you call them different things if they're the same note? And the answer is because they have a much different sound. Um, so if I play a C major chord and I start on C and I end on C, clearly that is very major sounding. If I start on A minor chord and I play A to A, clearly that has, you know, a very minor sound. So what dictates the sound of the scale is number one, if you're playing by yourself, it's kind of your resolution points, where you start and where you end. So if you start on C and end on C, that clearly has a major sound. If you start on A and you end on A, that clearly has a minor sound. Also the chord progressions that are being played, the harmony. So if you have a chord progression in the key of C, that's C, G, F, G, Right? You have a very major sound. If I have A minor, G, F, G, right? Now it has more of a minor sound because I started on this A minor, which kind of set the tone for the chord progression. Um, so in short, it's really the sound between major and minor are much different, um, even though you know C major and A minor have the same exact notes. And we'll talk about the modes in the next uh, next lesson I'm going to do. We'll talk about the modes. So the modes really, um, you know, hone in on that concept of like you have the scale, but depending on your starting and your ending point or, or the harmony that's being played underneath you, you can get a completely different sound out of that scale. So the good news, if you've been practicing your major scales, you're well on your way. You already know your minor scales and you're well on your way to knowing all of your modes. Um, in the modes, uh, the C major scale is also known as the Ionian mode, and the minor scale, the natural minor scale, is also known as the Aeolian mode. But we'll talk about that in another lesson. Um, you can also start on the D of the C major scale, and if I play a D minor chord underneath that, that has a different sound. Or an E minor, if I start on E, here it sounds this kind of Spanish kind of sound, right? So we'll talk about getting all these different sounds out of this one scale, which are which are called modes. Um, so I don't want to get too much into that now, but it is a it's a very cool concept. So um, 
Another, another thing about the relative minor is, say you are in a major key, like maybe I'll use uh, Let It Be by the Beatles as an example. So you got C, G, A minor, F, C, G, F, C. That's clearly a C major, very C major sound. So you could play a C major scale over that and that would work. But what if you want to get more of like a bluesy, you know, if you listen to the solo in that song, it's very bluesy. So how do they achieve that sound? Well, they're using the relative minor, which is A, but they're starting their pentatonic scale on the relative minor, right? So instead of just like thinking of this as like your A minor scale, you know, if you're playing in a major key and you want a bluesy sound, you can take your pentatonic scale starting on the sixth note there, A, and play an A pentatonic. So then you have... Now you have this bluesy kind of sound over that. And if you listen to the solo in that song... Right? It's very bluesy because of that A pentatonic scale. Uh, there's numerous examples I'll post on here. I did a tutorial on uh, one of Ed Sheeran's new songs off his new album, Dive. So that was, um, I did it on ukulele and I did it on guitar. And it's E, C sharp minor, A major, B major. So that's clearly a chord progression in the key of E. So if you go to do the relative minor of E, E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp would be your sixth degree. So if I start my pentatonic scale on C sharp, then I have this C sharp minor pentatonic over this E major, you know, so you get this more bluesy kind of sound. And I did a, um, a cover of that and I did a ukulele tutorial of that as well. Seems my ukulele tutorials are more popular than my guitar videos, go figure. <laughs> um, anyway, I did a song yesterday with someone called Rosie by John Mayer. So um, a really cool song, C major to either D7 or D. So really he's just playing the, the four chord in G major, which is C, to the five chord, which is D or D7. Right? So it's a cool, really straight song, but he combines in the solo. Right? This is E minor pentatonic in that fourth position. Then he goes to G major. So he's combining this G major scale with this relative minor E, e pentatonic. So. Um, So he's combining these sounds of the E minor pentatonic scale with the G major scale, and it's really cool. So, um, so I've I've listed some song examples if you want to check that out and try that out. Um, combining uh, major the major key with the minor pentatonic scale. Um, so anyway, relative minor it's the sixth degree of your major key. So whatever uh, major key you're in, just go to the sixth note, that is your relative minor. Um, so that means if you know all of your C major scales, you definitely know all of your minor scales, you just need to start them on a different note and end them on a different note. Um, and the modes are coming soon. Talk about how to milk different sounds out of that one scale. It can be very versatile. And then talking about taking a major key and applying the relative minor to the minor pentatonic scale to get more of a bluesy sound out of your solos and combining that sound with the major the major scale which is really cool all right hope that's helpful see you next time